Hello there, I am Justina Okechukwu and this is your Energy News Now for today, Thursday the 12th of September. Crude oil prices edged higher in Asian trade on Thursday, fueled by concerns that Hurricane Francine could disrupt production in the world's largest crude producer, the United States. London Brent crude futures for November gained 0.6% at $71.01 per barrel, while the U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude futures rose 0.5% to $67.63 per barrel. The rise in oil prices comes after a significant increase of over 2% in the previous session, as offshore platforms in the U.S. Gulf of Mexico were shut down and refinery operations in the southern Louisiana coast were impacted by the hurricane's landfall on Wednesday. The October contract for natural gas was priced at $2.27 per metric unit at the end of Wednesday's trade, marking a 1.7% increase. Yet to date, natural gas prices have declined by approximately 9.7% since 2024 started. The Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission has denied a media report that the agency has approved the $1.3 billion onshore asset sale by Shell International to Renaissance, a consortium of Nigerian and international energy companies. The NUPRC asked the public to disregard the media report. Uganda is looking to issue new oil and gas exploration licenses in the 2025-2026 fiscal year. The country's finance minister, Mati Akasaija, says the licenses would boost production volumes, encourage investments in the sector, and drive economic growth for the next financial year. Uganda plans to start commercial production of oil in 2025 from existing fields in the Albertine Graben Basin. The Republic of Turkey is considering an offer from Libya to conduct offshore energy exploration. That's according to Turkish Energy Minister Alpaslan Birakta, who also noted his country's interest in gas fields off Egypt and announced plans to send the Oruk Reis exploration vessel to Somalia by October for seismic work as part of a hydrocarbon cooperation deal between the two countries. The London Stock Exchange listed company Energin has reported a rise in its first half profit with Israel contributing over 70% of the total output. The company's production rose by 38% to 146,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day, resulting in a 27% rise in profit after tax to $89 million for the period. Energy says it is focused on expanding in Africa, Europe and the Middle East, prioritizing regions with strong policy support for gas. Following its deal to sell assets in Egypt, Italy and Croatia to global investment firm Kylel for up to $945 million, Energy expects to issue a special dividend of up to $200 million by the end of the year. South Africa has secured two grants worth 628 million rands from the European Union to enable its green hydrogen strategy. The first grant, totaling 490 million rand, is expected to unlock 10 billion rand in investments across the green hydrogen value chain, including storage and downstream industries. A second grant of 138 million rand will assist state-owned Transnet in its green transformation, allowing the company to achieve its net zero emissions target by 2040. Delegates at the SMP Global APEC conference in Singapore have highlighted the slow pace of the energy transition. According to the officials, Fossil fuels still accounts for between 84 to 85 percent of global energy consumption, a figure that has remained unchanged for 30 years. The officials stated that unrealistic targets and lack of resources were major hurdles slowing down the energy transition and that countries need to be allowed to move at their own pace. 
In the U.S., the Energy Information Administration reported that domestic commercial crude inventories climbed by 800,000 barrels for the week ended September 6, following three consecutive weeks of declines. At current levels, crude inventories are about 4% below the five-year average for this time of the year. The EIA report shows weekly supply increases of 2.3 million barrels each for gasoline and distillate inventories. On the Energy News Now calendar, keep an eye out for the September edition of the International Energy Agency's Oil Market Report, which will be launched later today. And that's all we have for you on Energy News Now this Thursday. We thank you all for listening. Remember to visit our website at FrontierAfricaReports.com to listen to all the previous editions of the podcast. You can also follow us on YouTube and all our social media platforms. I am Justina Okechukwu. Do have an amazing day.